Hey, it's Michael Saul, but everybody calls me Tiny, and this video is, is the pullback over, plus a nice triangle on this stock. This is stock market analysis for the week of October 1st, 2018. If you would like to receive interweek updates, go to www.attackthemarkets.com, put in your first name, your best email address, follow the directions, and you will be on the list. Facebook group is at facebook.com slash groups slash attack the markets. If you like what you're hearing on this video, give me a thumbs up and leave a comment and if you would like to be notified whenever a new video was put on my youtube channel click the subscribe button and smash that bell and you'll be notified okay october first already wow the final three months of the year and it has been a pretty decent year with the exception of this one sharp pullback that led to months of digestion but we are coming off on new all-time highs on the S&P 500, a nice small pullback to the 20 EMA. A few weeks ago, I did talk on the video about uh, the pullback maybe going as deep as this pullback went, which would equate to down here, but yeah, it just doesn't look like, uh, well, it definitely wasn't the case there, and it probably won't be the case here either. Even if this does pull back a little bit, which I think there is a chance that it will, uh, we do have the 50-day moving average as well as the previous all-time highs from the beginning of the year at 286.63 as pretty good support. So I, you know, there is still opportunity for a deeper pullback, something of this length, but <clears throat> I think that if we do pull back further, it's it's just going to go down to here. Could we turn from here? Well, the 20 EMA has held really nice on this pullback. On the, I'm sorry, on this last leg of the push-up. Okay. Uh, held, came down below it, but only for a day. Held, again, came down below it, but only for about half a day. Held. So from here, I mean, we have to be watching and ready for us to see if new money is coming into the market and if we... Uh, are going to run it up here. I believe there's a very good chance that we see 300 from here on the SPY. That's the S&P 500. And yeah, I could use the cash market and all that, but you can't trade the cash market. And, and for those of you who are new to my video, that's why I use the ETFs. I get questions every now and then where, where people are asking me, why don't you just use the cash indexes? Because you could turn on any news channel and see that, okay? And you could see the ETFs too. I'm not saying I'm so unique that I'm using the ETFs, but I would rather look at something that you can actually trade. And so in my opinion, the ETFs, so if I may be using the futures, but not a, a very few people trade the futures relative to stocks. So that's why I like to use the um, the ETFs. Anyway, right now it looks like a very orderly pullback. We do have um, what's here, we do have a mini coil, which is made up of three candles. Sometimes it can be four, but usually no more than four or five. And this is saying that we're looking for release one way or the other from here. Like I said, we do have the beginning of the month, and uh, funds can oftentimes inflow at that time. So I wouldn't be surprised if we pushed up, but that's why we wait for a trigger. The Dow. Also pulling back from all-time highs. The Dow has a while to go to it. The, D, the Dow uh, Spider, or the, you know, the Dow Spider, the DIA, the ETF, has a while to go before it gets to 300 comparatively to the S&P 500. And that would correlate with uh, the Dow Cash Index at 30,000, which a lot of people are calling for, a lot of people are looking for. I, th I believe our, our friend Paul Schatz said that uh, he sees the Dow by July of next year, July 4th of next year. He was recently on um, the morning CNBC show, which I just can't remember what the opening bell, no, not opening bell, the one before it. I can't even remember what it's called, the, the early uh, CNBC show. I don't even know. Anyway, uh, but I'm sure you could see it if you look for it online on the CNBC website. Okay, but the Dow also in an orderly pullback. Watch the 20 EMA, the 50 if it, if it really starts to get deep. Here's the Russell. Yeah, so the Russell below its 50-day moving average and below, back into its recent range. So the Russell is showing poor relative strength. It's not a short signal. 
But overall, it's showing poor relative strength. Mid-caps are holding up a, a bit better. And uh, the NASDAQ, NASDAQ looks the strongest. NASDAQ looks like it wants to hit the new highs sooner rather than later. But we always have to watch for a potential lower high in here that could lead to a, uh, a deeper pullback. Again, I'm not seeing any huge warning signs here that we have to watch ourselves. Uh, could we pull back? Yes. I don't think it starts the bear market. I don't think we go into a prolonged downtrend or prolonged correction. I just think it will set up another buying opportunity. I think we hit that SPY 300 before the end of the year. And I think there's a good chance. I mean, we do have the midterm elections and we have all this stuff going on, but the market just seems to be brushing all that aside. Okay, I also think that we could be in for a spell of trouble, but I'll save that for a later time. Right now, I am not trying to pick a top here. I am looking for pullbacks as buying opportunities, and this may, like I said, be that pullback that uh, we should be watching. All right, let's look at the sectors. So semiconductors are still pretty sloppy. Here's NVIDIA. Looks like it's going back to its highs. Here's KLA Tanker. Yeah, not so fast. So KLA Tank are not really acting so well here, but it's it's just a sloppy range. I don't have really a buy signal here, although it could be uh, banging the bottom of its range and, and may move up from here. Okay, may may want to decide to continue to fill this range out. I just, below the 50 and the 200, I, I just can't confidently have a strong buy signal here. Intel... Okay, so Intel is in a bear market, well, not anymore, I guess it's 47, but it was in a bit a bear market, 20% or more down at the lows here, off of the high, but overall, I, I just don't see that as a short signal either. The 50 is below the 200 day. I'm not a big death cross, golden cross guy, but I do like to see proper order on the moving averages, and right now we, we have fastest to slowest, right, the fastest that I'm using here is on the bottom, and then the middle, and then the the longest so uh, not really a bullish scenario there I just don't see a, uh, a shorting signal right here and now here's ADI again sloppy let's look at the banks so the banks yeah they got hit because of the rate hike they look like they're going back to their relative lows can the market rally without financials absolutely financials have been going sideways for most of the year and the market has still managed to uh, tack on some percentage points to the upside here so doesn't definitely doesn't have to uh, follow the financials I just don't think that the financials can act crappy for too long and the market is going to just sit around and just brush it off I, I think eventually it will hit that's one of the things that I'm talking about they may come home to roost but we'll see Bank of America not looking to buy that here here's Citigroup at support if the banks do turn this is one I would be watching Okay, here's J.P. Morgan. Watch the 200-day moving average. And J.P. Morgan was out in front. It was one of the, the leading stocks, and now that's it's back down. So, again, another one I'd be watching if we do turn. Here's Northern Trust at support. Uh, here's Goldman. Looks like Goldman wants to test the lows on the year. Let's go to the XBD. Yeah, at uh, new lows. I mean, not new lows for the year, but new multi-month lows and could be testing those February lows sooner rather than later. Here's Morgan. Yeah, it does not look good. Morgan definitely in a bear market. Um, I say definitely, and then I almost want to know it's there. It's 20% or more, right? Here's Interactive Brokers. Yeah, Interactive Brokers after this beautiful bull flag that didn't work. It didn't fail, right? Failure would be it starts to work and then comes down. This one just didn't work. Uh, this looks like it's continuing down. Watch for hole number 50, and then you've got this gap fill down here in the 47s let's look at, at uh, the biotechs I was gonna say the glamour stocks but I caught my tongue there so biotechs right up at the highs they're still acting okay here's biogen here's Gilead All right, Gilead looks like uh, it's trying to rally it came out of its triangle let's leave the glamour stocks I want to start with IBM because uh, it is one that we haven't been talking about in a while on the video but it looks like it could be this could be in the spirit of an inverted head and shoulders watch the 200 day slash 150 if it continues to pull back but if it turns from there look for the this these highs up here in the 162s caterpillar also got off its butt 
Watch the 200-day. I mean, right here is good enough because there is a hammer, but if it does continue, watch this 200-day. But see if this pullback resumes. Let's see if it could come back up here uh, to the 160s. Here's John Deere coiled up over here. How about Amazon? Looks like, yeah, I mean, I don't like Friday's candle, but it did come out of this 50-day pullback pretty nicely. See if it wants to retest the highs up here. There's Apple. Uh, Apple is in a, uh, what is it, is in a bull flag, yeah, for, for all intents and purposes, that is a bull flag. Here's the Zuck book. So the Zuck book looks like it's, uh, it may be headed down to the lows on the year, not really acting so nice. Here's Netflix. Yeah, more consolidating than anything on Netflix. How about Tesla? Tesla and they announced SEC investigation on Tesla, and it just got cracked. I mean, look, I, I if if this is in your wheelhouse to trade with this kind of volatility, then that's fine to me. I'd rather just let it work itself out and then look to get on once the trend is established and uh, we start to pause. How about bonds? Yeah, bonds look like they're headed lower. Uh, this it looks like. It's not a bad flag, really, because it's more in a range, but it looks like it's a pause getting ready to resume. Here's oil up at all-time new high. Well, not all-time, sorry. New highs on uh, multi-year here. So oil is starting to rock and roll. Remember, I talk about the July 4th uh, time period as being a seasonal high, but nope, uh, they broke out here, and oil looks... Look strong. There are reports that it's going to be a colder than average winter, which I'm just thrilled about living in New Jersey, which you get a lot of snow up here. But um, uh, so maybe that's contributing to it. Gold, yeah, a lot of people are trying to call the lows in gold. I don't see it. I just don't see the low here. Uh, the low here, maybe a higher low, maybe a bounce, but I think in the end it'll just form another A, B, C pattern, and then resume its downward motion wanted to look at alphabet sorry about that okay so here's alphabet uh, came just shy of the 200 day moving well not just shy but came shy of the 200 day moving average and has turned but it's still between the 50 and 200 which means it can play some ping pong so let's do the recap recap is we have a mini coil here which means we could go either way from here all right, it is a coil. Again, the trend is up, so even if we do release to the downside, I'm looking for support to come in. I think we have a good chance of hitting SPY 300 by the end of this year. I still think pullbacks are viable, but I think there is trouble looming. I think that we could be headed for a doozy of a recession and a doozy of a market pullback. I just don't see that here. So don't misunderstand me. I'm not calling for a bear market from here. All right, the stock that's in a nice triangle is internap corp i n a p is the symbol the 200 day right here but look what it's doing around it it's swinging back and forth watch for a release uh, i'd be watching for the uh, an upside release but watch for an upside release and see uh, and watch support of course you got the first support which is the top i'm sorry watch for resistance there we go. Uh, top of the uh, first resistance at 1530. And then you got up here at $18. And then, of course, you've got the highs up here, uh, which I got to get this out of here, but in the 22s. All right. Any questions? Tiny at attackthemarkets.com. Hit subscribe and smash that bell if you want to be notified when new videos are put up. Give me a like uh, with a thumbs up and leave a comment if you like what you're hearing. Have a great trading week. I will talk to you in the intro week videos or in next week, I'm sorry, the intraweek updates on next week's video.